Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about starting Magic the Gathering from scratch. One of my close friends, and actually he's an employee of the company that I work at slash own. And he wants to get started in Magic. He's watched his channel and he's like, what should I buy? What should I buy? And what we got him to get started with Magic was a bundle, a Caldas bundle, and then an Eldritch Moon bundle. And just random, like pretty much, I just have extras of commons, non-commons of whatever is currently in standard. So I gave him those as well. And now he's making a deck. So the question of what does it need, what type of investment is necessary to get started in Magic? I would just say two bundles. They call it a bundle now, but really there's just two fat packs. And that's probably enough to build your first FNM deck. Uh, the, the biggest issue here is you have to find a good FNM. If you're just beginning and you don't have that many cards and you are a new player, some FNMs I've been to, Groovy Geckos, Phoenix Games, Phoenix Games Reborn, uh, Battlefields in New York City, they are just so friendly. And you don't need to worry about getting shark. You don't need to worry about um, you know being made fun of because your deck is not good or you didn't spend you know, $10,000 of magic cards. You don't need to worry about that kind of deuce bag who's gonna bring his like $100,000 collection every <laughs> one of the locals in Houston. And I'll call, I'll, I'll just say it, uh, in humble Houston, so that put, makes you know, only two stores that I know of. Um, one of them bankrupt, uh, the Texas Battlefield. I knew that store was gonna bankrupt. That store was just awful. Like I used to play there, I went there um, a month to play and though the store was very crowded it was very smelly it was, it was just gross it was in summertime and they didn't have any air conditioning at like a hundred plus degrees not the best but the one dude would used to come to every single pre-release and he would bring his entire collection i don't know what he's doing at pre-release and he doesn't enter pre-release that's the weirdest part is he's there from 7 p.m. that night all the way until 7 a.m. the next day and I don't know if he's I, I don't pay too much attention to him I don't know what he's trade I can't imagine like people having too many good things to trade and he's obviously not trading into um, the newest set I just don't know what he's doing there but you need to find a place where people are super nice super casual super friendly and willing to trade treat new players with respect and willing to help them like uh, give them new cards you know hey you know this is you know a pack you can open the packs for me if you want because new players really enjoy opening packs I do not like opening packs because I have terrible luck and I know that um, so having you know new players open packs that kind of you know helps me a lot because I don't want to open packs ever so you need to find a place um, like that. So it's not really about how much money you need to spend on Magic the Gathering to get started. It's can you find the right place? Because you can spend $10,000 on Magic the Gathering, but go to a place where it's all these snobs and all these douchebags who think that they're better than you, and you're not gonna have fun no matter how much money you spend if you go to that F and M. Like, there's a few in Houston that I would call out, not by name, but I'm pretty sure they know who they are when they're watching this video, where the player base is just so snobby and like, I don't know what's going on. It's like, oh, you don't, you didn't foil out your standard deck. Hmm. We can't play with you anymore. <laughs> it's like ridiculous, right? Um, or EDH, yeah. Like, to, to be like snobby in EDH is so ironic, right? EDH is a casual, super fun format where the whole point is to play cards that are not like hyped and not expensive and not like played every day. Then you get run into these dudes who just net deck. They just net deck a French version, the French one versus one version of the deck, and they're playing multiplayer, and when they don't win, they don't understand because they paid for the $300, $300 Expedition Mana Crypt, which is you know supposed a tiny bit better than a regular Mana Crypt from um, the Legacy Masters or the Eternal Masters, right? They're like, oh wow. How come my mana crypt didn't do as well as your mana crypt? It's like ridiculous, right? Uh, but so the question is not how much money you have to spend. It's can you find a good place with good people? That's the question. Because even if you spend a very little, that's enough to get really a good experience of magic. But even if you spend a ton of money and you're just playing against people who are, are not incredibly friendly, 
and don't shake your hand afterwards that put the headphones in. I mean, it's one dude just puts his headphones in every time you play at someone. It's, in my opinion, disrespectful. Okay, first of all, it's pre-release. It's pre-release. Like, we're not at GP. You're not at the Pro Tour, dude. You're at pre-release playing like an eight-year-old kid. The eight-year-old kid's like telling you how excited they are. The dude's got headphones in and he's like, I don't know. Anyways, bye guys.